Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am Caroline Chang, your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Science is teaching us that everything is energy, and that energy is interconnected and interdependent. In essence, that energy is one thing. I call that energy love. Now, ancient wisdom and spirituality has been teaching the truth of oneness for eons. And now science is actually catching up, but it's not even new science. The science of quantum physics is over 100 years old. So this is science we really should know as a society, as a humanity. Now, when mankind awakens to the universal truth of oneness and starts to know that what you do to another person, you're literally doing to another aspect of yourself, then there will be peace on earth. Today's show topic is a world in quantum ascension with Marie Moeller and Yolanda Marie. Welcome Marie and Yolanda to Awake to Oneness Radio. Thank you ladies so, so much. Now I started listening to Marie probably over a year ago. And then I discovered Yolanda Marie early this year. And I'm so thankful to have them both together on Awake to Oneness Radio. Now, for those that are, may not be familiar, both Yolanda Marie and Marie both uh, channel the Arcturian Collective. So I would like you guys to give a brief introduction just for those who may not be familiar. Let's start with you, Marie. Well, I'm so glad to be here. I first need to say that and connecting with your audience at Awake to Oneness Radio. I love your shows and, um, you know, we are all awakening to the greater oneness that we are. And, you know, my, my journey, like all of ours, is a long one with twists and turns and catalysts and awakenings. But I was always an empathic child. I was very intuitive as a child. Didn't have this language, just was a big feeler. And, um, you know, when I entered my early adult years, um, probably high school, college, I had some experiences where I drifted a little off the intensity of feeling so much getting into real life at the time, right? Yeah. And really had to find my way back to the truth of who I really am. And I had a catalytic experience that activated fully when I turned 33 and a whole karmic experience entered my life. And I entered kind of a four to five year period of time of really great trauma and tragedy in my family's life. And, you know, it's spirit doesn't do anything that isn't perfect, right? Exactly. There's a perfection in the design and in the design of the circumstances, my family had a journey. Mm -hmm. Nothing from this world could solve those circumstances could resolve could bring resolution could bring healing and so you know that's what we first do right we go to the doctors and the experts and the teachers and the speakers and and all those people outside of ourselves right yes. until i realized nothing from this world was helping me no one had any answers and i think it was designed that way Yes. So that through that experience, I had more past life memory. I had a lot of things um, activating inside me. And I connected with a spiritual teacher who, of course, reflected to me that I had these gifts. It's in all of us. Yes. Um, some of us, because of our lifetimes of experiences and the dress rehearsals we've had for this lifetime, we, uh, you know, are more, it's more accessible to some of us. And so I just had to have somebody like turn the light switch on for me and almost give myself permission to connect with what I'd known as a child and then expand that more as an adult, as a conscious creator. And when I did that, I started, you know, receiving more and more messages from the guides and they are ultimately what helped me to transcend my experience and, you know, set my family on a course of, um, of greater joy and peace and ease and stepping into our talents and our gifts and finding resolutions to the problems we were dealing with. And, and the guides have been speaking ever since. So I oh, I listen every day. I, I receive most of my messages through automatic handwriting. When I channel for my blog, it's, you know, your hands are the most closely linked to your heart chakra. 
So okay. it's like direct messages from God, especially for me. Um, but for all of us, our hand chakras are really connected to our heart centers. Awesome. And so it's, it's uh, you know, that's my most direct connection. And then, of course, I receive all kinds of vibrational downloads and sentient guidance. And um, I can track energy. I can track people's energy through time. And I do that in my reading. So that's a little bit about me. And I, I'll just say the Arcturians came in later. I was channeling for maybe 12, 13, 14 years, and they came in in the last, maybe at least the last two to four years, okay. maybe four years, maybe 2016, about when I started yes. my website. Mm -hmm. But I had not always been channeling them. It must have been I was vibrationally ready, and it was time. So oh, amazing. Thank so. you so much. Thank you. Yolanda Marie, please share. Thank you for including me in this. Of um, course. Marie, I have also been listening to your, I think I found your channeling probably maybe over a year ago, maybe over a year ago. I'm going to say I'm not good with linear time anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I will just say I'm totally guessing. But um, yeah, definitely. Um, I found your channeling also at a time when I didn't even realize um, that people were really channeling the Arcturian so much, especially with the I knew one other person that did the automatic handwriting and the way that you channeled was so brilliant, the way that they worded it. And I don't mean to go off into this. I know this isn't supposed to be about Marie, but I'm just saying <laughs> you, the way they come through you is so very clear, bright, eloquent, just very easy to understand and right in tune with what I like to call the higher selves, collective consciousness. That's a new thing. I mean, these are all semantics, right? But this is it basically people's higher selves that are trying to integrate have been talking to me quite a lot. People who are in my stream of focus, my flow of things who are gonna to come to me. And this is like right, right in line with where the expansion is going as we expand out, we balloon out into wow. this new thing, right? And we bring other people along like a trail. <laughs> and so I saw it this morning, I wanted to get my whiteboard and draw it out for you guys, but I didn't have time, but it was insane, but wonderful. And anyway, I just wanted to, to just say, thank you for your work. Thank you for your beauty. Yes. Thank you for, and you are very Arcturian. I'm not surprised at all that they came and got you. <laughs> so yeah, you ooze Arcturian. And that's, and I mean, that obviously is a compliment. Yes. If for the people who, who know me know that, but if, yeah, if you, if, for those who don't know me, yes, for me to call you Arcturian would definitely be a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so I just wanted to get that off my chest. So now that, now that I've, I've, I have to bow to Marie. So um, <laughs> I, I wanted to say that. But for me, yeah, my story is very windy. I think we don't have enough time uh, for all of it. I'm not going to say it's tough to use the phrase born awake. And it's funny because I just talked about that in, in the last, I did sort of an energy epic, you could call it that. It was basically mm -hmm. messages that uh, guides and the Arcturians wanted to bring through. But um, I'm not exactly sure even what we would necessarily mean by that because everyone is actually born awake, right? Everyone actually really? has been remembering in the first place anyway. But I think when people say that they mean, you know, through the age of three and four, when your memory begins to solidify more, are you still awake to it, right? Are you still awake to where you came from? Are you able to access all of this stuff? Are you able, stuff meaning energetic layers of yourself, right? Exactly. And all of these other dimensions and some people are. And I don't really remember fully if I was or not, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanna say partially so, probably more. And that's actually just occurring to me while listening to you all. Isn't that funny how things can just come into you mm -hmm. many, many years in it, because you, you know, it's not something I think about every day and I never prepare for stuff. I didn't prepare for this. So I didn't think I'm going to write this down. You know, I just thought I'm just going to come in and make sure I'm open. Yeah. So I'm really glad that that, um, I don't know, even know how that came up, but yeah. And so for anybody watching too, it's, it's a really funny question to ask yourself, you know, like, what do you remember? Yes. When did you really come in? Because that's such a funny question when people say, when did you wake up? When did this occur? Sometimes you can find a straight line. And sometimes, <laughs> for me personally, there just isn't a straight line. It's like I remember knowing things. Yes. Right? 
I remember understanding something was wrong with what I was being taught. Mm -hmm. Right? I remember knowing there was something fundamentally wrong with needing to behave the way everyone else around me was behaving. And yes, I'm going to say in church, that is a touchy subject. So I'm always going to preface it because I don't want someone listening to pull a shade, close the door, turn the blinds. I don't want them to shut off their heart when I say that there might be something fundamentally wrong or there might have been something going on in, in the institution in general, not maybe a particular, there are many singular buildings with Christ consciousness that are perhaps intertwined in the institution, but are very heart-centered. And they are just, you know, and, and actually I believe there are many, 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 but on a broad scale, I remember just in general, something being wrong with everyone needing to behave a particular way. And I needed to do this and I needed to emote in this way. And I needed to understand the scriptures in this way. I don't know how that came about, right? So that means that some people listening right now were asking that question. I have no idea why that came up. So there's, there's a lot that's gonna come through here. Okay, and with all three of us, there's a lot that's gonna happen here because that awesome. was very random. Okay, and so I just need to say again, there was a channeling that uh, about a year ago now that uh, came through from Yeshua. I did not know to call the man who had walked the earth as Jesus, who I was taught about in church, Yeshua, until maybe three, not even three years ago, not even three years ago, okay? And he came through, I won't go into all, there are a lot of details to this, okay, but I'm going to try to cut to the chase here. He, he came through at a time when a lot of purging was coming, a lot of clearing was coming through me from other people, individually and groups of people in trauma, mm -hmm. okay? Interestingly connected, uh, Native American trauma from the United States specifically, because people who listen will not only be, but in this country where we are specifically on this ground, there was a lot of trauma that was coming through that needed to be healed that wasn't being acknowledged on a broader scale, like by humans, like individual humans in our human form, we're forgetting to acknowledge that something actually occurred. And there was a group that was uh, uh, on, on an etheric level, the higher consciousness of individuals, even if they didn't understand the trauma was there. Now this is happening, has started to happen full swing. You guys may be able to feel back, feel backwards a little bit and remember this, probably March this year, I don't know, like, you know, uh, March, April, maybe even before March, things started to explode. Like, you know what I mean? Little explosions and then bigger explosions. And then they had to do with groups of people in trauma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you guys were going to pull this all out today. So that... <laughs> well, it's ever needed. Hey, that's. Okay. That's... So, yeah. Wow. So, um, so that was happening and it wasn't just only the indigenous trauma that was coming through. It was other groups too. Yes. Um, and individuals and Yeshua actually came in. And a group had to do with um, people who were at that time. Now, again, this was a year ago. This has come very far since then, but this was a year ago, um, uh, roughly. And it was, Yeshua was asking through this because he wanted me to keep clearing and I wanted to maybe take a break and cut it off. And he was like, no, keep clearing. This was painful. I was on the floor writhing in pain. My body was like energetically vomiting uh, um, distortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. So he came through and, and said something to the effect of, and boy, am I paraphrasing here, but just keep your hearts open to those who are right now still in the institution of church fully because they're beginning to break free this way. Don't disconnect from the church. Do not disconnect because you are awake. Mm -hmm. some things do not disconnect there was some disconnection trying to happen so that must be about to come back a bit full circle for that to come in but yeah so people 
you know? So people were about to, or there was a rift, there was a rift and people were forgetting we're all one. This is me. You are me and I am you. Yes. And they're going to need you. Do not disconnect. Do not disconnect from that just because you think it's an institution that you no longer identify with. We're all one. This is unified here. Yes. So remember yourself. Remember yourself. Even though you don't want to reach back in time and pull that back to your present now right. and be that again where, where you are, um, have those misgivings and misunderstandings or you feel like you can't break free don't disconnect wow wow okay. I, i'm identifying so much with what you just said and i'm going to try to put it in a nutshell um i was sent to catholic school as a young child for six years um and i i knew what i was being i in catholic school you have religion every day so we want and we weren't catholic occasionally on holidays we would go to mass but we weren't Catholic. My parents sent me for a better education. And yeah. so, but you're, you're indoctrinated with religion every day. Mm -hmm. And as I'm five, four, five years old, I'm saying to myself, no, I'm saying to myself, cause I could not say it aloud. <laughs> I couldn't say it to any adult, to a nun or a priest or my parents. Um, but I'm saying to myself, no, this does not resonate with me. It doesn't sit what I'm being taught as, and I'm saying as young as five. And, and again, I mean, when I first moved here to the Poconos, I got very active in a church. It wasn't a Catholic church. It was, um, I thought it was non-denominational, but it wasn't. But anyway, I got very active in the church because of my children and to meet people. I'm in a new area. My children are young. I wanted to, you know, get active in church just for socializing. And I still would listen to the sermons and some things I would say to myself, no, it just, it just didn't sit, you know, some of the dogma. That's what it was. The dogma of religion didn't sit well with me. Um, but the whole thing, um, when I did leave, I left the church in 2007. I still said to myself, at first I was thinking, I don't want to leave. I don't want to lose my friends. And then spirit said, well, if there's your friends, they'll still be your friends, whether you're there or not. Okay. It didn't, I, I said, okay, they'll still be my friends. But mm -hmm. when I started Awake to Oneness Radio, I actually lost a lot of my Christian friends and I was even told by one very close friend, no, 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 I, I can't deal with you anymore. And I have nothing but love. I saw this person just a few months ago at a funeral and I have nothing but love and have always had nothing but love. So I, and I've even, actually I have a friend that's a pastor who has a small church. I even asked, because I've been doing speaking engagements That's at right. Unity churches and, and Unitarian UUs, so, which is Unitarian Universalist. I think I said that right. But, I, and I asked him, he's a friend of mine. So I'm like, can I, no, <laughs> it is like, so, hey, so I never cut myself off from church and church people. I, and I always tell when I see my Christian friends, it's all about unconditional love. God is love. And I bring out Bible quotes that are, God is in everything. God is love. Jesus told us, where is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is within. So I, 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 I there's lots of Bible verses that, you know, I share with them that speak truth to me. And I believe what we're all saying is exactly what Yahshua was teaching when he was here. Yes, so I so identify with what you just said. And I don't channel like you two ladies, <laughs> but I just, I do feel a very strong connection to higher self. And I think that's just comes from going within and listening. Because to me, meditating is listening. An open heart. Right. Right. Praying is talking to God, but meditating is listening. And I spend more time in meditation. And my only prayer is thank you, because I know in every now moment, all is well, all is perfect. Oh, wow. Well, and you are channeling. It's amazing how many times people say to me, I don't channel. I don't have those gifts. But the truth is, if you're a teacher, your, if that's if that's truly your talent and your gift and your passion, you're channeling. 
You know, if you're an artist, you're channeling in what you're creating. If you're an engineer, you're channeling. My partner worked in a prison and was channeling, right, in her groups. And yeah. so, you know, we are doing it all the time. And there's this, even that, like the labels, even like religion, Yes. There's all these labels, but, and you do it so well in the beginning of every single show, Caroline, how you talk about the science and the spirituality and how it's been telling us for centuries, but science is now catching up with spirituality, right? Yes. And yes. this integration is happening where we are all part of the oneness, which is this incredible field of energy. We're all aspects of the one. And, you know, that's just like a rabbit hole of all kinds of things you can explore with that. But I would say, you know, when I'm listening to the two of you talking, a number of things come up, but, you know, one of the things that the guide said to me, um, in a reading for somebody years ago was that we live our lives in layers mm -hmm. and we have all these vi vibrational layers. And when I do do soul readings, it's, you know, three or four layers will pop up right in somebody's reading because that's, what's most poignant in the moment. But some people feel those layers, right. And they hold on to them and their labels and their, how they identify themselves and it becomes our identity. Mm -hmm. And, and that's okay, because we're all surfing and journeying this realm in the ways that we do. And, um, but there is something that I think there comes a point for each of us where we're ready to step out, because it's constricting to live in the limits um, of the labels. And we start moving beyond, like Caroline, when you, when you joined your church or you, you created Awake to Oneness Radio, for some people, almost they might have felt you need to make a choice here. You yeah. know, you need to make a choice, but you're all of it. And yeah. you know that, but they're not at a place where they've given themselves permission to be all of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, aren't we all on a journey of, of remembering the allness and the wholeness, mm -hmm. the fullness and the richness that we really are? True. And so, sometimes it takes those catalysts mm -hmm. that we have. So like, I want to say two more things just quickly here is that sometimes we need a catalyst that it's not just an invitation. It's a requirement that you are, you need to meet this energy where it is in whatever event or experience you're having. Mm -hmm. And um, everything else is kind of going to wait until you move through and you rise in this experience. And that's kind of what happened for me. For a lot of people, they've had a tremendous amount of choice, you know, possibilities float in of, of things that could be a major growth experience. And they say, I'm just going to let that pass on by, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to look at that one right now. Cause that's a layer I'm not really ready for. Right. Uh, Right. And there's a soul wisdom in that. Some people are having the choice. Do I want to deal with that now? Or will I wait a few lifetimes? I would have, you know, if you'd have interviewed me when I was going through my deepest challenges, I would have said, you know what? I think I'll pass. That sounds really <laughs> excellent, but I think I'll just, I'll just go over here and have some other experiences and we'll chat later. No, no, I didn't script it that way this lifetime. And it was where everything in my life was going to crumble so that I could only look at this one thing. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, when you have a journey like that, and then when everything's failing and falling away, which isn't unlike to some degree, this world in quantum ascension now, right? Because I was going through this in 2003, 2004, 2008 ish. Um, and, you know, really doing some pre clearing for mm -hmm. this time now. And none of us knew in those years that this was coming, that this timeline was coming, not consciously anyway. So, but now some people are facing that and, and they're gonna find all the labels, political parties, religions, race, genders, sexuality. There's so many ways that this 3D matrix, you just have to have some deep respect for it because it is brilliant in the ways that it can divide us. You know what I mean? I love like, that, Marie. Yeah. <laughs> you have some deep respect for it. I'm going to catalog that. Yes. <laughs> well, that's through journeying. That's yes. through the journey. But when yeah. when things, uh, when the heat of karma or the heat of quantum uh, catalysts come into our lives, I would say in the world right now, COVID could have served as a quantum catalyst yes. for many people listening to this. Yes. Yes. Right. It's coming for all of us because I think, Caroline, you might know about this. I don't know if you know Yolanda, but um, it was James Gilliland of a SETI 
that I listened to years ago. I don't listen as much because life is, you know, the way life is now. But he he's the one who quoted this phrase and he said, we must become frequency specific to the new earth. Yes. And I think that's the most succinct way I've ever heard all that I can feel said is that the earth mother mm -hmm. is requiring us to rise in our frequency, do the work, mm -hmm. do whatever vibrational work is required mm -hmm. to get up to speed with the new divinity codes that we truly are. Mm -hmm. And when you're answering that call and you hear that invitation in the whatever way it's going to show up in your life right now, all the labels... And all the other things that limit us, number one, come into deep scrutiny. They mm -hmm. come deep into the spotlight. And then we are the ones who has to have to figure out how we're going to meet that, see it, witness it, work through it, honor it, release it, or integrate it. Yeah. And it's a powerful process happening on the planet. And that's where I can say, I appreciate all the layers I've been. And I still have layers. Don't think just because we're channels, we don't have layers. Yeah. Oh, we have some layers. <laughs> but when they show up, I can see same. them. Yeah, I can see them and I can honor them. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe that's what I wanted to add to that piece of like the religious piece. There's so many ways that we identify with things that we think define us and more than religion, I would say the question is, does this expand you or contract you? Because exactly. that's a good question. Mm -hmm. And we each were summoned towards expansion. And that's why we were okay to leave, you know, the comfort of being in a pack, of being in a community of people, because it's comfortable to be in that place and feel like you yes. have a home and you belong. And then somehow Very that like sparkly the little energy, the tribe. Very and difficult to leave what we think is our tribe. Yes, exactly. And protective layers. Yeah, I just want exactly. To and, and then I just wanted to, I'll finish by saying, you know, this little sparkly energy summoning us because it's the earth mother. It's yes. the cosmos. It's our higher selves saying yeah. you just received your invitation. It has been delivered. Yes. And then we can see that our tribe, they don't always receive the same invite or the, it the same way. Right. And then we look like we're leaving the pack or we're, ha we're being kicked out of the pack in whatever way we experience that, yes. you know, there's kind of, you know, and I think we've all, I can resonate. I resonate with some of what you described. I've, I've definitely have people that, you know, I've definitely had many tribes that, you know, and mm -hmm. I was on per perhaps a fast track to Ascension mm -hmm. because, um, and, and, you know, it was difficult for my kids. Perfect. I know in my kids' lives that, <laughs> That wasn't easy for them because in their world, they they were going through things of trying to fit in. They were in those developing years. And mm -hmm. and I can say our family has been alternative from the beginning. So we okay. you know, talk about born awake. I'll let you, you guys share a little bit more. But I resonated with that born awake. And then I went into a time of going to sleep. Just and the then like Harry it. Potter. You know, did you guys see in that film? Did you see the Harry Potter series? I've never seen Harry Potter. Yeah, some of it, Caroline. So, yeah. or, I did get some of it, Marie. I keep flipping you guys like you're the same person to me. It's all we're all the same. We are one. You're feeling the oneness. I'm feeling the oneness. <laughs> yes. I, I do this constantly, though. I do this in my personal life too. I call one person, the other person, my children. I call them each other. <laughs> Listen, this is what it is. This is real. But. No, yeah, definitely I can relate to that. Keep going, Marie. I just... <laughs> I can go on that because I get streaming too. But I just want to say when, when Harry Potter in the film, in the first uh, movie, he, he's, he is a wizard, but he doesn't know it. And he's living in a family. His parents died and his aunt and his uncle, Caroline, are raising him and his cousin, right? Mm -hmm. And he, they know, they know he's a wizard, but they've spent their every effort they have to like devalue him and, and not let him know who he is. Yeah. So he's made in this really small and he literally lives in a cupboard underneath the stairs. They've reduced him into a cupboard under the stairs and the cousin gets all like the birthday celebrations. They don't celebrate him at all. And but then there's like a 12th birthday, I think, and the magical wizarding school, it's time for him to go to school. And okay. so the school has to get him his invite to attend. And of course, he's in the muggle world. He's in the 3D world and doesn't know anything about the wizarding world. And, yeah. and, the, and the aunt and uncle do everything in their power to stop these invitations from coming in the mail. But now when they didn't receive the first one, then 10 more come, then, then 100 come. 
then a thousand come and now they're just like coming down the chimney and through the front door nothing's going to stop this invite from coming <laughs> and I think that is such a metaphor for these times. It's like, oh, wow, it is so much. I mean, totally. I've never seen or read Harry Potter, but what you just said is what we're all going through right now. 2020, we're all getting the invite, you know, and there are, there are forces or entities or other people like aunts and uncles and cousins that don't want us to get that invite, but there it's, it's going to keep coming till we get the invite. Well, yeah. and it's, that forces us out of the shell, actually. That's also by design. Yes. That's why there's no enemy. There's no real enemy. There is here. no like, enemy. Like, it's all by design. Yes. We've written it. The things that are happening in the cosmos that we call astrology, you know, that I used to believe, well, maybe that's okay. You know, it, it's like it, it took Arcturians and higher beings, and actually what that is is the expanded version of what I know. It's me, the extended... Ex expanded version of myself, of yourself, Marie, of yourself, Caroline, we're, we're remembering, yes. okay, in these, in our soul family is helping us to remember, and, but so now it's, the understanding is full on that what happens in the cosmos that directly correlates to what's going on here is also by our design, it matches for a reason, it's not that that is controlling us, it's not that we're controlling it, well, we sort of are, <laughs> we have, this is the tide that's happening. And all of these people, it's so funny. Marie, when you were talking, it, stuff was just coming in. Just like you said, it was just coming in. And I, you know, I restrained myself. <laughs> so, and so, yeah, but what's happening is this layer of responsibility. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, it's like we're floating up like a jellyfish, you know, mm -hmm. kind of right like this. Yes. We're, yes. As we're dropping these layers, but we're ever expanding. We won't ever be done. Right. We're never done until we complete the circle back to source. That is, has to be an understanding. There's no done. Right. But in terms of just matching Terra, Gaia, Nova Gaia, Earth Mother, everything that we are, what we're birthed from, you know, in terms of matching where she has gone already, actually, yes. but is also still going yes. and also will go. See, there's that chain. There's that loop of of, of souls behind us that we're pulling up as we elevate into this level of responsibility. Why is that so hard for us to grasp? Because that seems like who, well, who are we to be responsible to? That's not my responsibility. I just came here to live. You know, we, it, the, the shells, the, the box coming off of what, what does responsibility mean? Right. What does deserve mean? What does you know, uh, being brilliant mean, is that ego? Is it ego that we're brilliant? Is it ego that we have this responsibility to keep elevating now? As Marie pointed out, like, I didn't have any choice. I just, you know, <laughs> this is what happened. Uh, they, it, listen, all the mail just kept coming in, right? All of those invitations just kept coming in. <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, okay, got it. Okay. Got it. I'm got on the invite. Way. Yes. And so, what makes it so hard is figuring out, and again, these are semantics, so define, you know, individuals can define in their own brilliant way, and it will be brilliant. The individual yes. definitions will be brilliant because it will exactly. make perfect sense to them and me and you and all of us. But that ego thing, we're used to this whole deserve thing. I don't deserve to have this abundance. That's deep, that's deep down. Mm -hmm. Now, for some people, that's at the surface still. Mm -hmm. You know, who haven't begun to like really, and we'll use that phrase term, wake up to certain things that are going on. First, the facts and information, and then the heart expansion. All of that's coming. There are layers to this. So it's, but it's very, it, it's still kind of deep down and still needs to peel out of, of those of us who are already sort of like maybe have quantum leapt. Mm -hmm. Maybe ha we're on the fast track. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. And it's like all of a sudden you're thrown into this thing where what? I'm supposed to know this. And mm -hmm. then I'm supposed to teach other people this. And then what? You know, and it's like all of these other things come in. Well, I was taught that I'm no better than anybody else. Well, that's mm -hmm. actually true. Mm -hmm. But the definition about how brilliant we really are, that's the disconnect. That's right. Yes. I'm no better than you. You know better than me. Everybody else coming behind me are exactly the same as same. me. But right. it's how much can they realize that expansion. And the more that they drop the layer of all of this deserve and competition and, you know, separation and the pyramid where a certain amount of people have a lot and 
we're yeah. trained to believe deserve a lot, right? And then others are at the bottom. All of this distortion, which was for the reason of, of soul expansion, of it was for the reason of just refining the diamond, right? Taking mm -hmm. that coal and polishing it off. That's all that was for. Right. That's all that was for. It's a lot to get your head wrapped around. Yes. You know, we have allowed yeah. all of this to happen to take that God responsibility, source responsibility. How dare she say that? What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Force we responsibility. All, I'm all, not yeah. right. That was me. I'm not making fun of it. Like that was me. I'm like, wait a minute, Arcturians. <laughs> okay, you came through me. Now, yes, I hear you. Okay, now you're teaching me to let you speak. The, but I can't. I'm not supposed to tell somebody else this because why would they listen to me? I mean, Arcturians, you're wrong. Like, what are you talking about here? <laughs> No, <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's that 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 human society mindset that we're so small when we're not. We are God in a drop, each one of us equally, you know, and some of us are more awake and aware to that truth. And some are not, which is okay. Those are who are not awake yet to that truth. I have nothing but love. To me, it's like looking at a sleeping baby, a baby sleeping. A baby who, all you can do is just love them. Oh, they're so cute. They're still sleeping. Oh, they're they're adorable. I just love them to death. You know? <laughs> that is That's always the Yes. Right? That's like. From higher, their higher selves yes. are, are okay. Like, you know, their higher selves and you're closer at this point to their higher, higher self, self exactly. will eventually integrate than you are to the human. Yes, the, exactly. And I just have nothing but love for them. It's like, oh my goodness. They, but yes, that is that the society has always taught us to think of ourselves as being small, kind of like that aunt and uncle trying to keep, um, what was his name? Harry Potter. Harry Potter under, you know, under the, in a box and, you know, that's society, but it, it is all in perfect divine timing. I have nothing but thankful. I am thankful for all that is going on. I'm thankful to what I, I call them. This my I, elitist, uh, draconian, Deep state cabal. I just like to call them by their full name, and and I am I have I keep them for months. Spirit is saying for me to create a a thank you music video to them, and I keep I am going to do that before this year is out. And I I'm thanking them because they're the catalyst. They are the catalyst. What they're doing is the catalyst to humanity's mass awakening. And humanity is waking up in masses right now because of what they're doing. So I'm like, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> because it's all in perfect divine timing. It's so, so wonderful. So wonderful. Now, I want to get into the quantum ascension because that is the title of Marie's um, latest uh, oct October 2020 update, energy update. And I just think it, I, I listened to it three times. I, I'm probably going to listen to it more every day, but um, <laughs> it's just so wonderful. But I know this, that you also want, you were, were, you were looking up the word quantum. Now me personally, when I hear the word quantum, because for me, it was quantum physics that was the catalyst to my awakening, it was science. And when I think of quantum, I think of the quantum field, the quantum unified field that we're all one, we're all connected. To me, the word quantum means all connected, multidimensional, uh, infinite, unlimited. That, that's the that's what comes to me. I didn't go, you went to Wikipedia and did all that. I saw I was like, why is he doing that? It's like, okay, have at it. But to me, when I hear the word quantum, it means all, we're all one and we're multidimensional. We're living hundreds, if not thousands of lives all here and now in the only moment that there is. So, but I love, so let's, uh, yeah, Marie, talk more about the, the quantum ascension that we're going through right now. 
Yeah, and it's really important in the duality game. That's my language for it. It's a game. It's yes. a matrix, and we're in the duality game. And I think, Caroline, you also call it the chess game, right? Yes. Yes. More than a war, we can call it a chess game. Yes. You know? And there's all these steps and plays being made. But in the duality game, there's been this energy of tension. And that has been, in large part, the fuel source for a 3D matrix. And mm -hmm. of course, fear on one side of the tension game, the duality game, is, is a large part of what feeds this, this matrix. And so it was interesting when I was looking up quantum, because think about, look at the people who are, would be in our audiences. Yes. A lot of the people are already somewhat, they're awakening. Yes. They could be you know, a veteran and they could be woke. And there could be people just beginning that process. And there are some people who just stumble into our videos too. Yes. And it's interesting to see when they go and do a Google search or, uh, you know, duck, duck, go search or whatever you want to call that. When they do their searches, it's interesting what is hidden behind mm -hmm. yes. because it can be incredibly hard to find, even for those of us who know what these things are yes. and we go looking for them. It's interesting how they're in, in many ways, inaccessible. Yes. Um, talk, we don't have to get into COVID, but you can pick up any topic that, you know, could be an issue for YouTube or whatever. And, and you can't find that. And yes. so it's interesting how limited when I was looking that up for my video, for my, my marinades message after the transmission, yes. it, I, I struggled and I searched and I searched and I thought, I wonder if this happens to other people. Like she's talking about something quantum, quantum ascension, and they go to look it up. They're going to find about the amount of resources that I found that could fit you know, in, a, in my pocket. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, but I was like, this isn't quantum, but this is what people discover when they go looking. Yes. Right. And it was good to have that perspective in the duality game. Cause when people are like, what's she talking about the duality game? You know, even that can be hard to find because when they're searching and the search engine are, are coded or structured or templated that you only find the side of the narrative that they want you to have. Right. That's when oh, sure. some, some people say, well, I never found anything on that. And some of us keep searching. Yes. And, and listening inside. And when I listen for definitions, I listen for the energy. It defines itself. Words come into my head. I'm sure you both have this experience, really, is that, you know, I, I, I was sitting here saying it's ridiculous that I can't find a quantum definition. I'm sitting in the same office, the same studio. And right. across from me is the I am to the 10th power, you know, this, this design that I made and I put up on a wall. Yes. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's the quantum and the unified field and yes. that living quantum energy where we are a part, we are like, a, we are the drop in the ocean and the ocean and the drop. Yes. And, and we are reawakening to that living essence that nothing separates us. It's like you, Yolanda, calling me Caroline and Caroline Marie. It, it's actually so perfect because it is, we are in this ocean of oneness together. And yes. really, we just have songs that are our names, right? We have a sound that yes. we identify, and we come to that sound. So do our animals, right? They recognize the sound. Oh, she means me, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and yes. yet, we're tapped into that quantum oneness, that field that is the infinite, infinite light and source of all things and source of all creation. And I think that's why it's easier for those of us who've been in the journey somewhere on the journey to drop the labels, to drop the dividers, to drop the things that would identify us as separate as each other, even the cabal at yes. some level, right? Yes. We are in the oneness. We're in the oneness game, but yes. we're in the oneness truth, I'd say with a capital T. Yes. And we're leaving the game of whatever Webster might define as oneness. Yes. And we're entering like the quantum oneness that's like way off that page. Right. So expansive. You know, we probably have to have hundreds and thousands of conversations as there have been through the centuries of the poets, philosophers, scientists, um, the disciples, so many people trying to language and give expression to the lived experience of what the Christ consciousness and the oneness is. Mm -hmm. And we're here bathing in that. And, you know, one of the first things to admit is that language limits us. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Very true. There. And one, I'll say this last piece, one of my main guides, I might've said it on another podcast, but one of my main guides is Earth Feather. He's a very native shamanic spirit. Um, and he's who I first connected with when I first started channeling. But 
he came, he's one of my gatekeeper guides, but he doesn't speak much. And he let that be known because he has in his lifetimes on earth and mm -hmm. in his, you know, presence in spirit, words are limiting. And, and for him, it even like, he feels like he loses power. The more words he speaks, he's, oh. he's amazing at like, amplifying his presence but words start to limit him and i've never thought about it until more in 2020 when i see trying to language things where a lot of people aren't feeling the vibration of these things yet and they're still in the limits of language and what do we have to communicate language so yes. when we're using 3d language it's hard to talk quantum with somebody who's talking about well you're a democrat well, you're a Republican. <laughs> they don't want to enter this like off grid, higher vibrational oneness field of oneness connection we're, we're living in. Yes. And, um, yes. and then you, you become a living presence, a living example, a living vibration of that, which is what I think we all do and what we do. Yes. And we don't have to justify. I think you've been talking about debates, you know, right. debate, debating and justifying you're in the duality game. And I respect other people have their perspectives, absolutely. But yeah, I yeah. think what's more effective is just to sort of show up and be who we are. And we've taken some arrows for that, I think, in the past and may still. But when you, when you really uncover this truth of the capital T and this oneness vibration and this quantum physics energy and the quantum ascension that's happening, that feels so good. Yes. that you do start to vibrationally move and the arrows just go right through there's it just goes because you're moving into like pain. transparent that's right sorry marie i no, tried no. to restrain myself no, no please ahead. please you know yes. the streams of energy with all of us yeah i want you to keep going though i don't want you to break flow i just want to enter like sprinkle things in but i want you to keep going but yeah it's because what you're saying this relates to we're just stepping into being with the more that we recognize it then it's like one step up of being like one more layer dropped off of you know big ones right now big layers yes it was little feathery layers before yes. coming off little by little right. they are sloughing off yeah okay <laughs> right now with people um, and so, yeah, and the whole Democrat, Republican, oh, I'm so relating to everything you're saying. It's like, there are so certain rooms that I won't speak in, particularly with my, with my family in terms of blood, you know, mm. family I was born into who are beautiful. And this is, you know, I'm not going to insult anybody. Everybody is where they are for a reason. It's a perfect plan. But I won't speak until the resonance is at a certain point because they won't hear me. Exactly. Mm. They'll never hear me. And then when the resonance is there and it's their higher consciousnesses or the Arcturians or Pleiadians and a lot of my higher consciousness is coming through, everyone is like, the understanding mm -hmm. comes through the distortion to mm -hmm. the heart that they didn't even know what hadn't been open. It's like when you didn't know your heart wasn't open and then all of a sudden, Woo, you know, and you feel that you can see it on the faces in the room. They didn't even know that they were closed off. They didn't know they were distorted. Yes. And then when it's done, they will often close right back up. But for that moment, they felt it, which means it's in their memory. It's in their conscious memory bank. It's so good. Yes. Even for that moment to be there for that moment. Yes. It's so good. It's wonderful. Yeah. Very, very true. And, and language, like you both are saying, language is extremely limiting. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, uh, in our, our carbon-based humanness, that's how we, <laughs> that's how we communicate. But we are moving <laughs> to a higher, we're moving to a crystalline, what I believe to be crystalline um, base um, form. And it will be our higher self living through that form. So our higher self that knows all, remembers all. And, and we probably, when we're fully in 5D, we probably will not be using words anymore because we can- Just yes. came in. Yeah. Caroline, while you're speaking, stuff keeps coming in. You need to hold up a sign, like, <laughs> like something. Oh, because it comes in. So when you said that, I heard immediately like, see how this feels with you all, but it's going to bridge the two. And I'm sure they don't mean two, like one, two. There are many layers of it, but there, I just heard it's going to bridge the two. It's the higher self integration, but we're still bringing right. the experience. But it's like, but I don't know about you, but I'm still wrapping my head, my processing mind. 
-hmm. around what this will look like, of course, it's fine. It's not like something I'm going to obviously lose sleep over, but right. You know, right. Yeah. Put a picture of this in my, in my brain, in the gray matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> to make it fire a picture that makes sense to me. Hasn't yeah. really happened yet. Yes. I, I understand what you're saying. Cause I get that okay. question. People will ask me, well, what is it going to look like? And I'm like, I can't tell you what it's going to look like. I'm I'm in this now moment going with the flow of it. I know whatever, it, it's going to be beautiful, whatever, yeah. but I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like. Yeah. Yes. And I don't think anybody can because it's so many different timelines and, and it's each person, even though we're all collective, but each one of us individually are creating our experience. We are, right. we are that powerful. People limit, they're so used to limiting who they truly are and to know it and live it and demonstrate it. And that's what the, you know, we're doing here is, is demonstrating it. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, wow. When you speak, you like, it's on me. When you're speaking, both of you, it's like on me. <laughs> I used to think it was anxiety. We talked about this before. Marie, I did an interview with Caroline the first time and we talked about how I used to think it was anxiety. You probably mm -hmm. heard this, but I was feeling when it was actually something completely different. Because the, the language was limited, right? Yeah. When you have something experiencing, you go to the language that we've been given. And really, somebody needs to be coming up with this, you know, new earth dictionary, at least. And, and these podcasts are kind of doing that. We're seeding. And all the time I see channels making up words. We're making up vibrations because the language isn't fitting anymore. We've broken, you know, we've left like the penthouse. We've jumped off that building and we're free We're free flowing here. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and I think we have to, this is, this is a phrase that's helped me from a class I took with Adrienne Elise. She's another podcaster on YouTube. Um, you know, she shares messages and a lot of astrology, but in her class, as soon as she said it, I already knew it. I remembered that I knew it, but okay. she uses this language of giving ourselves permission. Yes. A lot of this is giving ourselves permission to leave the limits of the dictionary if the dictionary doesn't finally if it doesn't describe or share what we're what we are knowing inside or what's expanding inside us but and there's all kinds of giving ourselves permission giving ourselves permission to seek a new tribe giving ourselves permission oh, yeah. to embody our quantum frequencies yeah giving ourselves permission just to be different yes just to be that person who's rising and she doesn't even know where she's going but the light is leading her or the light is leading him, right? When we know we're being led by that kind of life force, it yes. defies explanation, yes. right? It, 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 it transcends language. And I think that's at the level where Earth Feather, one of my guides, and, and you know, it's amazing that these Arcturians know how to speak, you know, you know, higher dimensional speak. And then we somehow have these abilities as these conduits to, you know, um, yeah. translate those frequencies and vibrations into yes. these messages, but they have some serious skill. I mean, to be honest, we have some oh, skill, yes. but that's some serious skill. <laughs> that is some take serious all that they know <laughs> and, yes. and squeeze it into these, still these little words um, that come through us. And, um, and that's why when people receive, because mine, I, I type up the text and then they also see the videos. Yeah. But it's really a bathing in the frequency and you don't even when we leave needing to understand or understand, however we do that, mm -hmm. we start to understand, we experience, like I'm experiencing yeah. this conversation with you more than, I'm not memorizing it. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I don't plan to be tested on it. Right. <laughs> Hopefully not. There's no quiz at the end of this podcast. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but truly we're like vibrationally soaking in this experience. And, and that's a lot of what the quantum ascension is. What's your cosmic coordinate? What's your inner, what is your vibration as a conscious creator? What are you choosing to vibrate? What color are you? What frequency, what song, what tone, um, what is that vibrational emission that you're choosing in that moment? And that's your timeline. Yes. And then if you don't want to be in that timeline, if you're in a timeline of grief or you're in a timeline of tension or anger or rage or whatever you might be, that is your timeline. And yes. then with another, as we said, like with another conscious breath, 
the guides are saying you're just one breath away from another timeline, a whole different experience. Okay. And, and we're breathing here together. We're in this like breath, this oneness breath together, sharing in the enjoyment of the resonance in our connection. Yeah, that's the collective co-creation. Yes. Happening. I'm hearing all of this quantum stuff's coming in while you're talking. Yes. Right? Yes. And so you're tapping into that field of energy and we don't really need words. We're using words to connect, but like you, we both, we all sort of shared, it's, it's going to come through and it's going to be much more telepathic, much more sentient. And we're going to um, begin to just know that I feel you. That's how I met earth feather for the first time. Okay. When he first came through to me, the guides were encouraging me to just allow and give permission Yes. to however it was coming through. And I could have said, well, I can't channel like all those other channels. No, they right. said, feel it, sense it, you know, experience the sentience of it, how you experience it. And that's exactly how he came in. And when I gave permission for that experience, I had the experience. Yeah. And the that's, same is yes. true. I'll just say this last little piece. The same is true. If we don't like something we're experiencing, yes. then we have to give ourselves permission to choose a different vibration. A lot of people think, and, and our, our thoughts are vibrations, but if we can just choose a different breath, like choose a different feeling, choose a different energy inside us, um, you know, there's something where we can literally move ourselves out of the experience. And I'll share this. Well, I had, my cat died yesterday. Oh, and um, oh I know, and he, he'd been with me for 14 years and we'd, we journeyed well, and and I didn't expect it. I was taking him to the vet. They were going to check him again. We were there last week, and he wasn't any better. And, you know, the grief of that, of course, my higher self knows he's free. He, yes. he is bigger than the room I'm sitting in. He always was. I, had, I never understood how he squeezed all that massive energy as the shaman cat that he was into this tiny little 14-pound being. And I really, I think it was, he was... 14 pounds and 14 years he was here. Um, and, you know, I had that experience in this morning, you know, it was the first day I'm not like fixing his food and, you know, you go through all those firsts, right? Yeah. But you, you make that vibrational choice. I could feel, I, I absolutely gave myself permission to have all the emotions I was having yesterday. And, and I was able to be fully present because um, he was able to, the vet assisted his passing because he was in so much pain. And, um, and yet I chose that as a conscious creator and I chose now to be in this timeline with you. Yes. I choose to be in this timeline of the quantum oneness and I'm not in grief that, and I'm not in, in what the experience or the, just the missing or the celebration even of his life. I can choose that the minute we get off this podcast, yes. or I can even choose while I'm in this podcast to be feeling that. Yes. I have the vibrational choice to be in the cosmic coordinate in time and space, wherever, wherever I choose to be. And I have such joy being in this conversation with the two of you that grief is not occupying that space inside me right now. I'm absolutely present in this vibration. And that's, that's being offered to everybody with, with all the pandemic or whatever, however any, anybody views that the elections, you know, what's going on in different countries, financial worries and tensions and fear of the illness and are people frustrated with the masks, wherever people are residing vibrationally, it's a choice. Nice. Every vibration, every moment is a choice. It's just a choice. And in fact, my cat vibrationally was here physically present yesterday. And then in, in a matter of, you know, minutes, he was not here. And I think that's, you know, I just recently did a podcast with a vet who said her experience when animals pass, it's just, they love being in their body. They feel really good. And when they don't feel good, they go through the doggy door, yeah. they go through the cat door and they just become spirit again. And it's a vibrational choice at some level. They're saying, I'm ready to go. Yes. And, and that's us. We're occupying this vibration right now here in this moment together. And then in the rest of our day, we're going to have a lot of other choice points vibrationally. Right. And there's so much freedom in that. It is. It's quantum. So quantum so freedom. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That is so true. And I say, and that was something that came to me early on in 2007, in my early days of awakening. 
It is a moment to moment choice. How we choose to feel is in our, in, in our power. We can choose to, you know, we can choose our thoughts. We, if a th thought floats in that is unpleasant, we can say, no, you know what? I don't want to give it a second thought. You know, I, you, we can choose it. It's in our power in every now moment. Even when my son transitioned, I was at peace. I knew he wasn't, he's still right here very much. And we, I even have a closer relationship with him now because he was a grown man. He was living his life. I saw him a couple of times a year. You know, we, you know, he had his own apartment, you know, his own house. He lived in a house not far, but I only saw him a few times a year, you know, but now he's with me all the time. I have a closer relationship and I know he's not gone. He's still very much here. And when you know it and your cat's not gone and my Coco's not gone. My Coco, when I first connected with Kyle through an expert medium, you know, Suzanne Giesman, not mm -hmm. only did Coco, um, Kyle come through loud and clear, Coco came through my, my, my little doggy who transitioned in 2007. She came mm -hmm. through because I felt guilty. I felt so guilty that I didn't do enough or I wasn't enough, I, you know, that, and she was about 14 too. That was about her age. And uh, she's a little, little thing. And um, I just felt so guilty. And she came through right away with Kyle to say, I'm okay, mom, I'm fine. I'm right here. So, yes. Exactly. The yes. infinite, that eternal essence that we are. And yes. we can tune into that at any time. I mean, that's, I felt him this morning. I felt him showing me just, he was so proud how big he is again. I think he was saying, I'm big again. Right? Yeah. And, and there's yeah. joy in that. There's just joy. There's absolute joy in that. And it's us, you know, it's just the human. And we have to honor that. There's the yes. human part of us yes. that has those human emotions and the tears will flow through. Yes. And, um, and, and that's, those are also choices. Yes. Let that energy flow or hold on to it and right. tuck it away as a layer of grief and then right. maybe take it back out 20 years from now. What, what um, uh, James Gilliland is saying is we have to become frequency specific to the new earth. And in this quantum way, we are not holding on to anything. Right. We are not going to be these dense carbon based beings. We are, we're moving into this transparent kind of divine feminine frequency fluid energy. Um, and that's why the, I think you were saying Yolanda, the, we, we've already, many of us have transcended the feathers, like the stuff that you're like, Oh, that's not for me. You know, the stuff that's easy to let go of. A lot of us have done yeah. that already. And then there's the deeper sandbags that right. like things like, and, and I think what they were what they were saying, what they were saying with the feathering that was coming off, it's like what, what they meant by that is there were, it's, it's the same type of layers, you know what I mean, heavy or small or whatever, but it was being let go like a little at a time. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like it was not as easy. And now it's like we are becoming, and when I say we, I really do mean collectively. I think- yes. And, and I keep getting again, they're, they're coming to correct me and be like, stop saying you think. Mm -hmm. they're, yeah, they're, coming, they're, they're checking me at the gate right now. Yeah. So I have to say that more that. people are aware, <laughs> more people are awakening than we realize. Oh, no, so I the do. Confusion, yes. The confusion of what is going on, which is by design, it's fine, right? I mean, it doesn't feel fine. I don't mean to uh, minimize how it feels in the human experience. That's not what I mean, but but it is from higher perspective. And, and by that, I mean our higher perspective, by the way, it really is, it's working out. But the confusion is like keeping everything so like, wait, what is happening? It's so hazy mm. with individuals who, who maybe didn't have their feet anywhere near this. And that's okay. why I think maybe that's why Yeshua, his, the early on, maybe that's what was coming part of why that was coming through mm -hmm. you know a lot of times as you guys realize you know there are different streams of focus and streams of consciousness that will flow toward what is happening and this is a lot of energy in this i'm going to call it room there's yes. no time or space so yes. we are together in this room of co in conscious space and energetic yes. space 
and there are some consciousnesses flowing toward us that are more ready than they let on to the haziness of the outside outside world, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is in here. Let me just say that everything is in here. You two know this. I'm not saying this for you to like re-remember what you already know. I'm saying this because from consciousness level, we need to hear this again. Like somebody needs to hear this. We need to hear this and soak it up. Everything is inside of here. Yes. And so it's, it's, it's interesting. What's coming to mind is there's an act of grounding where if you don't necessarily want to observe the time and the space of grounding in terms of, you know, let's call it 3D physics, where you go out and this is beautiful and I'm not minimizing this, but you go out and you put your bare feet on the ground and you touch the tree. Yes. And you visit with the physical energy of what we experience. But then there's also another way to ground where you don't have to observe the time and space with these eyes and this skin and sensory mechanisms, right? And you can know your, your bigness that everything is inside of you. And one way to connect with that is to ground wherever you are, extend your... Um, let's call it a cord of light. There mm -hmm. are many different ways to describe this, so I'm trying to keep it a little broad. To the core of Gaia, Terra. Yes. And as you breathe through your chakras, and I personally, I'll have um, asked Gaia to help clear out the contents that are no longer necessary, mm -hmm. okay? You can help clear out these chakras, these energy centers, these cores that are little engines and little doorways to different dimensions of ourselves and, the, and experience, right? clear out that mess. That's going to help drop distortion too, by the way. Yes. It's going to help clear out because what happens there is the heart, the true heart mind that's connected to source remembers all of this. It understands even if we don't processing. So if you're beginning the journey and you don't necessarily process and understand everything that's happening, it doesn't matter because your heart is connected straight to this divine source and so one way that um, humans throughout the different divinations and different ways that we've presented on this planet have learned to describe them as chakras, as these wheels that turn throughout our etheric field. Right. Some people will call it a Merkaba. Again, many people listening, and, and certainly you two already understand what I'm saying. But, uh, you know, hey, listen, a lot of this was new to me. Merkaba was yeah. new to me four years ago. Okay, like, and to, for some people listening, they'll be like, what, you didn't know that four years ago? Yeah, totally didn't know what a Merkaba was, Merkaba, Merkaba. Listen. I, 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 I say Merkaba, so I, I don't know if I'm saying it right or wrong, but I love it, yeah. So with the expansion, let me cut to the chase. This can get long-winded, and I'm sorry, but so the- <laughs> You're fine. I did have a point. We had a point, <laughs> and it was that as you're expanding in this, visualizing, connecting with Gaia coming up through what's called a root chakra, your root chakra up yes. through all of these energy centers that are part of your makeup. You can breathe, breathe Marie, right? I love that. Just breathe in. And that's exactly what happens. You're breathing in the breath of divine consciousness, a part of you're breathing in more of who you are, yes. more of this quantum soup, sauce, energy, everything, all that is quantum connection which is all of us. And imagine that as you breathe, everything just gets bigger and bigger. Everything is your field. Everything is the energy that you are getting bigger. And suddenly you're at the moon and then you're at our sun and then you're at planets and then you're at more of the cosmos and it can continue and continue. And you realize all of this is inside of you. It will feel like it is inside of you because mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Because it is the more that you practice it. Now, I, I, um, I do have a question for both of you that, um, okay, because it's, it's, again, it's uh, the information that I'm holding as my truth is that in every now moment, we do have that choice to change timelines. In every now moment, in any now moment. And right now, it is extremely easy to make that shift, to, to jump on a higher, that 5D train, I would say. But 
also the information that I'm getting from, you know, I listen to my uh, stream of consciousness, the flow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, one of the, um, some, well, a lot of the information I'm getting to is that December 21st, 2020, the winter solstice is a very important time because after that date, it won't be as easy to jump on to a higher train. So not that it would be, nothing's impossible, but the information I've been getting all year is that this 2020 is the year to get on that train that you want to be on before the winter solstice of 2021 uh, of, I mean, I'm sorry, um, December 21st, 2020. So I'm just curious um, what your guides and, and collectives are, are saying about that particular day. Do you want to go, Yolanda? Do you want to speak first? It's it's up to it's completely up to you guys. I'm sure there's going to be more, but stuff already came in. Go ahead. There is never not an alternative. Right. Was the first thing that was coming in, but they were telling me that anyway, or in a different words, earlier, earlier mm -hmm. this year, um, earlier this summer. Um, mm -hmm. There will always be a window in. There is always an opportunity to spread, to expand your consciousness. Each person has a divine, intuitive bringing forward, if you will, of their own truth. Through the cosmos, they have a plan. When you say this is harder, it is by the divine choice of the individual who has chosen to experience more of the depth of polarity. More of the experience within them wants to come forward in order to enact upon consciousness, which is still mired in 3D, certain agreed upon lessons, agreed upon events, agreed upon things that were further still exact experience. No need for concern here. No need for concern here. All is well, all is well. The more that you decide to see the experience of others expand quickly, it does impact, enact upon the collective co-creation of said person or persons or communities or situations in which they may decide to further rise in a more quick fashion. And of course, there are other goings on in the galactic community that might also further expedite this process. You see, what is happening with the solstice is but a factor of what you have decided. And it not is, is not only you. It is you in addition to the ones who are not awakened to from higher perspective have also agreed such things. Also, one can incorporate the healing of those who are undergoing the process of cleansing and who did not necessarily want to do so going in. Those energies which have denied progress to humanity, who have usurped certain rights and privileges and enacted wrongful authority in the state of polarity. Again, this is another way to visualize what has occurred on your planet. We are the Arcturian Council. We love you and transmission. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yes, that totally resonates. It so, so resonates, yes. Marie, did you? want to add yeah. yeah you know it's so thank you yolanda that was beautiful and the arcturians yes and it's you feel the expansive energy that flows through right that's just like you know people can experience that in 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 real time listening to that right 
And, and that is an energy that's always available to all of us, that bigger, it's like my cat. He's like, I'm big again. You were big in that moment, Yolanda. You had that big energy flowing through. And, and maybe that is a metaphor for, I think, what this um, December 21st, 2020, I think yes. since 2012, since de December 21st, 2012, I've had several dates. I know it was 2012, might've been in 2016, and I feel it again in 2020. I'm going to get everybody an image here. I don't think it was just one, one time timeline where the kind of the portal was closing out or it might be harder. I feel like my partner worked in a prison, which I've said was a clinical psychologist in a prison. And I was never really inside those prisons, but I heard about them. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, it's the, one of the few places you can't visit your partner at work. Right. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but, but, um, there were, I forget, but there's like, there's, there's names for like doors that close. You go through certain sections as you as she was going to work each day. So you go in one and there's a holding area and then one door closes and the next door opens. Mm -hmm. And then she'd be in that segment and then that door would close and then the next door would open. Okay. And so literally it's kind of, I feel that as a metaphor right now since 2012. And I saw that as glass. So, and in, in what I felt at, at, mm -hmm. at December 21st, 2012 and after, I felt that some people were more on the other side of the glass now, um, choosing to remain in the older frequencies and the older paradigms. Mm -hmm. And then maybe around 2016, I felt it again. I guess that is a kind of four year increments, right? Yeah. And yeah. here we are in 2020, um, feeling that again. And I think some people are choosing their, um, their vibrational uh, resonance and their vibrational residence where they're choosing to be. And I think um, there's an energy of the sandbags, I think, are going to get, if, if gravity could feel different, if like 10 pounds could feel like 100 pounds, maybe after December 21st, 2020, it's just going to feel heavier. And, and in a world of polarity and getting even beyond duality, because to me, duality and polarity have a slightly different vibration. In 5D, polarity is complementary. And in 3D, duality is divisive. Okay. And I feel as things get heavier, that's also designed to make people leap because the freedom and the sovereignty and the quantum nature of us is going to expand exponentially as we move through December 2020 and we move into 2021, this time of innovation, the template, the more exposures still to come in 2020. I think there's still more disclosures 2021. This whole next decade is our renaissance yeah. of renaissances. You know, if we think about Da Vinci in the time of the Renaissance at that timeline, we're going to see creativity and architecture and medicine and healing, like quantum leap into a new, in a whole new stratosphere. Yes. And imagine how are those sandbags doing in that quantum leaping process? You know, for people who are holding on to the sandbag and they're like, I, I just, I, I'm not going. And they want to hold on to the sack. Yeah, Some it, people it are going to do It's yes. a choice. It is a choice. And, but some people are going to look at the bag and they're, and they're going to watch themselves. Why am I holding on to this? Right. And when they have that experience and the, the doors feel like they're glass in that metaphor I gave, right. because I think literally we're going to become like people in track. I don't know when you jump the hurdles or something, but you could like, <laughs> you could say, wait, 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 I'm still coming. Yes. And, and the freedom and you see all the sovereignty that's expanding and the Renaissance, you're going to be able to see it. Yes. And you say, do I need the sack anymore? Do I want to go where they're going? Because that looks like a whole lot more fun. Yes. Yeah. I think that, and that's where literally like quantum leaping of just, just literally yes. going. Yes. You got to fast track uh, yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right? So true. Yeah. So true. And I feel, I just want to add to that just to say, I do feel, and many people do, there's an incredible, like, gloriousness, a resplendence, a brilliance coming. Like, imagine what it was like being some of these innovators, creators around Da Vinci's timeline. You know, there was this renaissance of ideas and creative expression and art and and all of these beautiful things and downloads. You know, I think it was Da Vinci who like drew the first sketch of scissors, okay? Mm -hmm. And even planes. I think he was already, imagine what we're gonna download. Oh, imagine wow. what the innovators 
and these these new generations of kids when they're freed of the 3D baggage and they're no longer tethered. Even the crystal kids, I know some people think that there that a lot of these higher dimensional beings have been coming in in the early 2000s and and 2010s and you know I, I think they're still impacted by the matrix to some degree. When we are free, fully free to be this divine expression and we are living in these 5D quantum energies. We we can't conceive our greatness at that level yet that that's true but but we can feel we can play in it and we get little glimpses when we get glimpses we celebrate those glimpses yes and we may make a video or we may go paint something or we draw something or we write a play or whatever we do um and and also allowing the 3d matrix to crumble and as best we can the people who are going to surf that well are people who can really fall back into their hearts and be a witness of that, be a participant in it as a witness of it, thanking it like you were saying, Caroline, thanking the deep state cabal, that full long name, you know, thanking them for being a catalyst so that more invitations can go out to more people on the planet. Yes. You yes. rise in frequency. And so I have tremendous, um, it's not just optimism. It's more, that it's a knowing. It's, it's a knowing. knowing. It's a knowing, it's a knowing. And I I, also know that we have the skills to traverse what's gonna be murky and windy and still up and down and all around and upside down and inside out. We are an upside down world turning right side up. Yes. We have to reorient to those coordinates. Yeah. And and that divine flexibility and sovereignty and those frequencies of that come in. And we're practicing our quantum nature and quantum is fluid and quantum is interconnected and quantum is conscious you know yes. we have to move into a level of i give myself permission to be a conscious participant in whatever this is and the permission sheds the layers it it's does like, right when you were saying that I was, it brought me to the mind of another channel her name is vicky crystalline i don't know if you guys have ever heard of her um very open heart well we all are i don't mean to say but she just her heart is like whew, mm -hmm. you know it's so very expanded and um, she recently had a channel that talked about exactly what you're talking about. But, you know, again, the way we say things seems like it's flipped. It's the same. It's exactly the same. She just said, it's not really that we are. And again, this is the same, though. Instead of thinking of like reaching for the frequency. And I loved how she said this because this hadn't come to me this way. We're sloughing off the layers, which we know, but it's to reveal, mm. right? You know what I'm going to say. It's to reveal what is already there, right? Everything's inside of us. It was like a light bulb came on to my human when I heard that, <laughs> when I heard that, that come through her, you know? It's, and um, it just makes so much sense to also think of it that way because then the permission is easier. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yep. Just let it go because it's already inside. I don't have to work so hard for it. Right. We have to work to just be. It's a different mindset. Yes, exactly. And it reminds me of the golden Buddha. Oh. Yes. <laughs> the gold. We are, we are that golden Buddha under all that 3D right. matrix stuff. And, and I think of it as baggage. I think of going oh, yeah. 5D. You know, it to me, I always say it's an inner journey. And you... You, you don't want to take that 3D baggage with you. Now, I have overpacked some. <laughs> I have gone, I'll never forget when I went to uh, Costa Rica in 2007, and my big suitcase was over 50 pounds, and I had to, I had to, I had to pay extra. <laughs> I have overpacked because I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to wear. So I, just pack, I was like, I'll just pack everything. We're going so, to party. Yeah, going to 5D, which is our inner journey. We can't bring that 50 pound suitcase with us. You know, we've got to leave that, leave those, leave those 3D dimensional things alone. That was a perfect visual. <laughs> It is, and I just want to say, I think it came through in the last transmission from the Arcturian Collective, but that the hero's journey, which we are these epic heroes right now, we came yes. for these times. Yes. It's not a physical journey so much as it is a vibrational one. Not, yes. And that's when we like have the physical suitcase that might be 50 or more pounds. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> 
and I'm all about packing. Like I, I, I have a biggie van um, <laughs> that has all kinds of storage compartments for when my kids were younger and we still have it now. It's the college hauling vehicle. Yes. Uh, but, but I know all about like, you know, all the stuff and, and resources. That's something else that I, I have valued over the years. But in the same vein, I think the vibrational journey we're about to embark on is much lighter, much yes. freer. Um, you know, and I might be traveling and I use that in a lot of my earlier videos of like this rope bridge we're, we're traveling across that could be a little rickety. You know, are you having your 50 pound suitcase with you? Probably not. Right. I think I like have crystals will travel. Right? Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And the other term, the other term I've been hearing a lot is that we, the we that are awakened now and have been for a few years and, and just, you know, getting more grounded in our awakeness are the ground crew. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, um, looking at, you know, I don't watch the news, but if a person <laughs> watched the news, they would think, oh my God, you know, we're not awakening in mass. We're not unifying, but we are. It, that's exactly what's happening. And, and it's so amazing to know that, to know that, yes, the masses are awakening. When my brother has started having, in April, was able to have a conversation with me about, you know, what's going on and, and him actually listening. I'm, he's 18 months older than me and he's never listened to anything I said in 58 years, but he was actually <laughs> listening to me. My brother, he's actually, wow. The world is awakening. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 So. I was just going to say uh, before I forget, yeah, something right along these lines, and I don't want to slow anything down here, but had a message come through and just did a did a message a few days ago. I don't know when about these this new group that were awakened at processing level. Yes. Okay. And they were there. It's like, so even the ones who, cause there are different levels. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And the ones that were just at facts, just at facts, news, processing, duality, yes. you know, and all of that is part of it though. It can be, it doesn't have to be, but it can definitely be part of what is the catalyst. I love that word. Yes. What is the catalyst? And they, there's a group of them that just, Whew, hearts are just because that's what this is. This can really, whew, from a Christ consciousness perspective, which is, I don't want to call it an archetype, but it is one very familiar, large way to look at this. Okay. Yes. But let me tell you what I get from Yeshua is that he is not concerned with what we call this. This is, you know, it, it's, it's not really, it's just a way to identify and understand in our bodies what's going on. And so this, this is heart expansion. This is heart opening that's happening right now. And that's where the confusion comes in with the layers of awakening when you get the facts, but your heart has not bloomed yet. Yeah. The heart opening to just get more into this, this is where it gets touchy, is about the inclusiveness and non-judgment of situations regardless of the gray area, very gray, strange appearances that we may not be able to understand or articulate yet. Like we don't have all of the, what we think are the details. Well, from a quantum perspective, the details can change. Exactly. Quantum, from a quantum perspective, if we're shifting timelines like this, really from moment to moment, we're in a different experience. We're in a parallel reality. So imagine an entire stream of consciousness. In other words, many different consciousnesses together, co-creating something and shifting together. Mm. Details have changed, you guys. Like what happened in the past is not even what you remember happened in the past anymore. This is like, when you start to get into that, it's, it can almost be mind blowing, which is pretty amazing. That's not a bad thing. Yes. Because our minds are limited. Yes. Mind blowing is not bad. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. No. What's going on, you guys? There's a group of them. And yes. you might be able to feel it. Check in and see if you feel it. Yes. A group of them are like, whoosh, whoosh. That's what I hear. <laughs> it's yes. like, I hear the sound. Whoosh. Yes. 
And they're realizing it's like an aha moment yes. on a collective scale. With, with collective aha, uh -huh. yes. And so it's rising. And so the message was, and that message is, is that, so it's going to cause because we are linked in that. Remember, I talked about, imagine this big sphere. That's us, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> imagine us as a big sphere. And there are layers from the core of the sphere fanning out, right? Mm -hmm. All around in all directions. That's the expansion. Think of it, picture it as Earth, as Gaia, yeah. and it's us around, and that's the expansion coming out, right? Well, we're pulling up, we're all linked. There are trails all around this sphere. Gosh, I need my whiteboard, you guys. I'm not gonna walk over and get it, it's too much. <laughs> There's like a, and so this hard expansion that's now happened with this already awakened to like, hey, something ain't right here. <laughs> stuff is going on and here are the facts and here's what and I can't believe this happened and yes. they that for maybe even a few years you know without yeah. but disconnected still from the heart mind and the and the connective tissue let's call it to each of us when that opens up so then the layers of us who are more toward the outside of this expansion okay mm -hmm. like we've already had those who have already had certain uh, uh, amounts of this heart expansion are, psh, we are quantum leaping right. to another mm -hmm. level of, but here's that word nobody wants to hear. What? Another level of responsibility. Yeah, I said it. Responsibility. It's okay, <laughs> it's okay because we're, we're all one. So it's it being responsible is being responsible to us as one. So yeah, it's responsible okay. Responsible for the continued expansion. And yes. Responsible to, yes, we're going to go back and forth and still peel our own layers, but responsible to not dip down so far. Like just a level of responsibility, like you said, Caroline, earlier, that, you know, the, the parent-child sort of relationship. Yes. You know, that's one way we can look at it. But, you know, these aren't children. They're our you know, there are others. There are, there are others. right. There are other selves. They are us. Yeah, they just just us, us that are, you know, starting to wake up, and and some are still asleep, but they're they're us. They're us, so and they know what the they're responsibility doing. Responsibility for me, the responsibility is, of course, of course, I'm going to take care of my child. Of course, I'm going to take care of my other me. So yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's such a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other me. The other me. Yeah. Yes. The other me. yeah. yes. It's just take... sort of like, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's just me. When this stuff comes through and they, they, they lay that word out, I'm always like, here we go again. You know, <laughs> that's my inner child. Like, I just want to be a kid. I, I don't want to be responsible. <laughs> but it's all I'll good. Play, and we will play. We will play. But we will play yeah. with conscious awareness right that the playing right. is actually where we're going oh mm -hmm. my gosh marie one thing oh and i'm sorry i hope you i hope i didn't cut you off again but i didn't want to forget to say when you were talking about this now i've got to get back to it about all of the brilliant things that are coming forward with the like a new renaissance imagine when you were saying it i just wanted to say imagine so we had the instances of the da vinci's and it but it, it's going to be all of us all oh, of us are da vinci Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Seven billion da Vinci's. <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and I'm not a big person who talks about the Bible verses or quotes, but it, it somehow those layers have been coming up more and more. And I think Christ says you will do all these things and, and more. more. And it more. is the time of and more. And more. Mm -hmm. right? oh, that should be the title of this podcast. And more. <laughs> and more. <laughs> <laughs> quantum ascension and more <laughs> and more yeah I, and like i said i've been saying since march 21st of this year i am on a high and i'm you know i just invite everybody because it is vibrational i understand everything is energy everything is vibration i love seeing all of the um freedom um rallies all over the world and yeah. i know sometimes they use the term fight 
And I, I connected with one of them um, yesterday. I emailed them just to say, I'm, you know, I'm all about what you guys are doing. I just don't use the word fight because I know words are powerful and fight is pushing against something. And whatever you push against, you make it stronger. It's all about that energy. So for me, instead, I don't use the word fight. I use the word transform. Oh, yeah. So it's not about pushing against. It's about allowing it so it can change. So oh, can yes. Form. Yes. But, oh, you ladies, I mean, I could talk, we could go on all day long, you know. <laughs> but so each of you, please, Yolanda, please share with our listeners how they can find you. Well, I finally built a website, y'all. So. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, hands up. <laughs> it's called YolandaMarieChannels.com. But the primary easiest way to reach me is my YouTube channel. It's called Yolanda Marie. I literally, right now, I don't know how long I can keep doing it, but I literally respond to every comment. And the flow, the high vibrational flow of content consciousnesses that pass through. I'm, I'm so, I'm going to use the word blessed, but we know this is all, we, we're all doing this, but I love it. The, the high frequency stream of consciousnesses yes. that come through and leave the comments. And so I go through and I literally respond to everything. So if you come to my YouTube channel and watch something and leave a comment, I will see it. Yes. Unless YouTube has done something, you know, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we gotta send we gotta send YouTube and Facebook some of our blessings. Yes. <laughs> hey, don't take our stuff down, please. <laughs> right. All those energies in there, all that trauma yes. in those venues. That's yes. what that is. Yes. You know, yes. and yes. yeah, it can get rough. <laughs> yes. And Marie, share. I know yes. there's several. They can share all the ways they can connect with you. I do have several. I hope it's not too confusing, but I have FrequencyWriter.com. That's my website. That's where you can always see the text and the videos together of the Arcturian Collective's transmissions. Mm -hmm. And then my YouTube channel where I post those videos is Color the Magic on YouTube. Then I have a nonprofit. Uh, that's Whole Soul School and Foundation. And we're committed to the education and empowerment of people worldwide. And our specific focus through our nonprofit is supporting people whose lives have been impacted by incarceration and are entering that reentry process, reentering their lives in new ways. Wow. Mm -hmm. awesome. And then we also have Whole Soul Mastery, which is where I'm bringing more of these uh, round table conversations. Caroline's been in one. I should have one with you, Yolanda Marie. We should connect. Oh, um, nice. And that's where I'm doing more of those round table type conversations. We could hop on there sometime or yes. so, so whole soul mastery. So, yes. so, so frequency writer, color the magic, whole soul mastery and whole soul school and foundation. I hope, hope people can catch that, but you just look for Marie Moeller and you'll find me. Well, all the links yes. will be below. Okay. <laughs> Oh, right, right. <laughs> and I should mention too, it um, on my YouTube channel before I forget, and many people know that, but somebody might not know this. Yeah, I, I make sure to put the transcriptions below. Yes. Always have, just because you might not have time. You know, that's the way I was when I started out. I mean, you don't always have, and I make them like, you know, they're usually the channels are maybe five, they're getting longer now, but maybe five to seven minutes. But a lot of people will just click in and read. And so that's yeah. why I built the website. So now I'm loading everything onto the website and all of that. Awesome. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to mention, so you can just read. <laughs> well. You ladies are so amazing. Thank you so much. You are, Caroline. Oh, <laughs> thank you. This has been wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. And we're definitely, it's just, and we're definitely going to get the, God, I think we're all on the East Coast, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got to get together. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm, I'm thinking, well, I'll share. Um, I have put it out there. I don't know how this is going to look, how it's going to come together, but I have put it out there for that date, the winter solstice, December yes. 21st, okay. 2020. I want to celebrate. To me, that's just a day. Uh, the mass awakening is on and I want to celebrate humanity's awakening. And, I, and I'd like to celebrate in Sedona. 
I just for the inner, I've never been. I've been to Arizona three times, not to Sedona. I want to go to Sedona. I want to just, I want there to be, what I will envision is a global celebration that day where people are celebrating all over the world and we're coming together online and, and you know, it's just, I mean, it's really a celebration, a party of humanity's awakening. And so I just kind of, kind of, Seeding that idea, connecting with other groups, and seeing how that's going to unfold. But I will definitely be partying that day in Sedona, and you all are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just felt that quantum resonance and quantum renaissance, and I think we're going to be celebrating that we're moving into that new Aquarian frequency mm -hmm. of that renaissance and resonance of oneness. And... Yeah. Um, and it's exercise. So I, I hear you, sister. You know, yes, I'm all about it. So yes. we'll keep talking. Yes. Yes, we will. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Marie, you're new to me, Marie, but you may now start to learn. So I'm getting better at this whole thing. So I will I will try in terms of like being live and like or going. Yeah. If I would have gotten more into my history, it's funny. You mentioned 2002 and it went that's around the time that I kind of went in. Mm -hmm. And then there was this, you know, the sort of thing happened where I went all over the place and was kind of in, enclosed in this box. Anyway, that's for another time. Okay. Yes, <laughs> well, we can, do, we can do more of these for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, the sure. Sure. The celebration yeah. in Sedona, like yes. I'm wrapping my head around, okay. okay. Think, think about it. Right, right, right. Yeah. This, 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 this and that, you know, like holidays and all. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Time to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and time and it's time to celebrate. I'm going to share yes. with you guys this great celebration video that I saw on um, one of the channels just the other day. And it, it's it's just a, a celebration a video of people dancing from different different locations and parties. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, that's what I see for December 21st. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And partying and celebrating humanity. It's definitely going to be the it's energy. It's time. Energy. It yes. is time yes. to celebrate. Yes. For sure. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. I love you guys. This has been too yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Namaste for now, but we're going to keep in touch. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bless Hi, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Marie and Yolanda as much as I did. It was really, really a great conversation. Um, I also like to invite anyone who's interested in a free mentoring session with me to go to my website, which is awake to onenessradio.org and email me and just let me know you're interested in a free mentoring session. I also am hosting monthly Zoom meetings. Our next meeting is going to be October 22nd. That is a Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you're interested in joining us in that Zoom meeting, just email me and I will send you the link. Thank you. And also um, on my website, you will find a page that says free online events. They're all holistic online events that um, you can try for free. So if you're interested, just go to my website, you will see a page for free online events. Everything I do is nonprofit. It is, I don't charge for anything. Um, it is my calling. It's my mission. I've been doing now for almost six years, and I will continue to be doing as long as I'm here. <laughs> so I just invite anyone that is finding my program helpful and informative to um, support um, with a donation. There is a donation button on my website. You can support me by donating a dollar, five dollars a month to help support the mission of Awake to Oneness Radio. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. Love you all. I will see you all next week. Have a great, great weekend. Bye for now. Bye-bye.